Well, Eleanor, it's nice to meet you. Great I'm Errol Fuller, you too. and uh, as you know, I've written a few books on birds of paradise and uh, related subjects, and so I know quite a lot about Wallace. One of the interesting things about Wallace is the decision he made in his early life mm -hmm. to escape from a sort of fairly mundane job as an accountant or an office boy and um, travel the world. Um, and the way he thought that he could do this, because he was just a boy from fairly humble beginnings, and in those days, in the middle of the 19th century, only the sort of very wealthy could travel the world. But there was a strange fashion vogue at that time, which was the collecting of natural history specimens, shells, insects, butterflies, and most of all, stuffed birds. Seems strange to us, but that's what, 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 what it was. And there were very few houses in the country that, that didn't have a case of stuffed birds, like this one. Uh, uh, a poor house would perhaps have something with just a couple of sparrows or something in it, whereas a, a, a great stately home would have a massive case full of exotic tropical birds. And Wallace got the idea that he could go to dangerous, exciting parts of the world and collect unfortunately kill beautiful birds, skin them, preserve them, send them back to England uh, where he had an agent that would be able to sell them and he'd be able to support himself like that. So that's what he did. And um, at a quite an early age he travelled to South America and one of the things he really wanted in South America was to collect these rather beautiful hummingbirds. They've oh, got beautiful. wonderful iridescent sort of feathers and there are three hundred, more than 300 different kinds. So he found these things, skinned them, and stuffed them like that flat, and then sent them back to England, where a taxidermist would be able to relax them somehow, I don't know how they did it, but relax the skin and shape it so it looked a lot more like a living bird. But obviously Wallace couldn't send anything like this, or this, back from the tropics, because expense um, room. So everything he did, he, he prepared so it was absolutely flat like that. But they are, although they're flat and they're, they're sort of lifeless, as you'll see, but it's still an incredibly beautiful thing. And Wallace sent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these back to Britain. Beautiful. Oh, it's um, even got the sex of the yeah, 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 and the little, little label yeah. saying everything. And um, then, th so he went to South America and got, got the hummingbirds and all sorts of other tropical birds. Came back to England and he, he decided that what he really wanted to do was to go to New Guinea to get these things. And these are absolutely amazing birds, birds of paradise. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it's got all this wonderful iridescence mm -hmm. there. And again, he sent lots and lots of these back to England. His most famous, well it wasn't his most famous discovery, but his favourite discovery was something called the Wallace Standard Wing, and I've got one over there. It was named after him, this bird, because he, he was the first person to ever discover it. This one is very old and very faded. This was stuffed in the 1850s, but it's got a wonderful iridescent breast. You can see it. the colour. Uh, yeah, you can see the colour on the breast, but unfortunately the colour on the back has gone. But this one was actually taken by Wallace himself. This is a, a Wallace specimen, so it dates from the 1850s. So was it black on the top then? It, no, it wasn't black, brown. but it was, it was a, a, a sort of richer, right. more sort of chocolatey brown, mm -hmm. and the head was a bit purpley, but that, these things fade very quickly in, mm -hmm. in sunlight, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Where, whereabouts are most of his, you know, Specimens he collected at the Natural History Museum, obviously. Most of, the, most of the things that we know he collected are in um, great museums like the Natural History Museum, the Paris Museum, yeah. there's one a big museum in Leiden, one or two in America. Right. Um, there are very, very few things like that left in private right. hands. But then there are many things that he collected that we just don't know. Yeah. I mean, some of those might have been collected so by no yeah. I mean, evidence. They almost certainly yeah. weren't, but, but some of these big cases that still exist will have Wallace birds right. in them, but we just, no, there's no, yeah. no, no way of knowing. Okay. Well, it's going to be great to use these with the school children. 
these objects. Well, I hope so. And, 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 us, and, and so. if they're if they're very careful, then they can handle them as long as they do it, you know, very, very with care. Careful. Otherwise, you can see if mm. they start stroking them like that, they'll yeah. they'll ruffle the feathers up and spoil them. them. And this is just a demonstration of really the way these things were intended to end up.